Hello, and welcome back to Friday Reads, where we help you find your next read. I'm Jill. And I'm Julie. And we're here with our little puppy today, because last week was National Dog Lovers Day, so we've got books that feature dogs, dogs, and more dogs. So, turning it over to Jill for her first pick. My first one is The Friend by Sigrid Nunez. A moving story of love, friendship, grief, healing, and the magical bond between a woman and her dog. When a woman unexpectedly loses her lifelong best friend and mentor, she finds herself burdened with the unwanted dog he has left behind. Her own battle against grief is intensified by the mute suffering of the dog, a huge Great Dane traumatized by the inexplicable disappearance of its master. And by the threat of eviction, dogs are prohibited in her apartment building. While others worry that grief has made her a victim of magical thinking, the woman refuses to be separated from the dog except for brief periods of time, isolated from the rest of the world, Increasingly obsessed with the dog's care, determined to read its mind and fathom its heart, she becomes dangerously close to unraveling. But while troubles abound, rich and surprising rewards lie in store for both of them. And it has a great day, which is the <laughs> biggest and best dog. <laughs> My first pick is from 2021, and this is London's number one dog walking agency, a memoir by Kate McDougall. So this is in the new nonfiction section. It's an irresistibly charming memoir of a young woman who started her own business as a dog walker for London's busy, well-heeled dog lovers. It's a true love letter to London, dogs, and growing up. In 2006, Kate was working a safe but dull job at the venerable auction house Sotheby's in London. After a clumsy accident nearly destroyed a precious piece of art, she quit and set up her own dog walking company. She knew little about dogs and nothing about business, and no one thought being a professional dog walker was a very good use of her (laughs) university degree. Nevertheless, Kate embarked upon an entirely new and very much improvised career, walking some of the city's many pampered pooches, branding her company London's number one dog walking agency. With sharp wit, delightful observations, and plenty of canine affection, Kate reveals her unique and unconventional coming-of-age story, as told through the dogs and the London homes and neighborhoods that they inhabit. One walk at a time, she journeys from a haphazard 20-something to a happily and surprisingly settled adult with love, relationships, drama, and home ownership along the way. But as Kate says, it's all down to the dogs and what they taught her about London and about life. <clears throat> My next pick is The Story of Edgar Sawtell by David Robluski. <laughs> Big name there. Born mute, speaking only in sign, Edgar Sawtell leads an idyllic life with his parents on their farm in remote northern Wisconsin. For generations, the Sawtells have raised and trained a fictional breed of dog whose thoughtful companionship is epitomized by Elmundine, Edgar's lifelong friend and ally. But with the unexpected return of Claude, Edgar's paternal uncle, turmoil consumes the Sawtell's once peaceful home. When Edgar's father dies suddenly, Claude insinuates himself in the life of the farm and into Edgar's mother's affections. Grief-stricken and bewildered, Edgar tries to prove Claude played a role in his father's death, but his plan backfires spectacularly. Forced to flee in the vast wilderness lying beyond the farm, Edgar comes of age in the wild, fighting for his survival and that of three yearling dogs who follow him. But his need to face his father's murderer and his devotion to the sawtail dogs turn Edgar forever homeward. So, yeah, it's kind of a different one. My second pick comes out of our fiction collection, and this is Sirius, a novel about the little dog who almost changed history by Jonathan Crown. This was published back in 2014. It's a highly original, tragicomic novel as seen through Sirius, an extraordinary dog who helps his Jewish family escape from Germany to California, becomes a Hollywood star, and ultimately contributes to Hitler's downfall. (coughs) Levi, a fox terrier, lives with his family in a grand townhouse in Berlin. Each day he enjoys a walk through the neighborhood where people greet him by name. But the year is 1938 and Berlin is no longer safe for Levi or the Leoncrons, his Jewish owners. They rename him Sirius after the constellation to protect them. One night, Nazi troops storm the city and begin to search houses. Sirius alerts the family, and they manage to flee all the way to California. In his new home, the master becomes a chauffeur, and Sirius befriends everyone from Humphrey Bogart and Cary Grant to Rita Hayworth and Jack Warner. 
He's renamed Hercules out in California, and then he becomes a canine movie star. <laughs> Little does Sirius know that he'll soon have to perform his most difficult acting role yet, when through a series of exceptional events as World War II unfolds, he winds up at the right hand of Hitler himself. Wow. Can Sirius help the German resistance derail the Fuhrer and reunite with his family, or is the cost of peace too high? This book is written with charisma, heart, and delightfully spry prose. It's an enchanting fairy tale about love and humanity and a roving exploration of a momentous historical moment. Like my dog Skip and the artist, this feel-good novel will make you stand up and cheer. So Aww. check out Sirius, a novel about the little dog who almost changed history. I really like this subject with Me too. dogs as main character. It was very fun <laughs> making these picks this week. This is from nonfiction. It's called Oogie. <laughs> in 2002, Larry Leavitt and his twin sons, Dan and Noah, took their terminally ill cat to the Admore Animal Hospital outside Philadelphia to have the beloved pet put to sleep. What would begin as a terrible day suddenly got brighter as the ugliest dog they have ever seen, <laughs> one who was missing an ear and half his face covered in scar tissue, ran up to them and captured their hearts. The dog had been used for bait for fighting dogs when he was just a few months old. He had been thrown in a cage and left to die until police rescued him and the staff at Ardmore Animal Hospital saved his life. The Levins, whose sons themselves are adopted, were unable to resist Oogie's charms and decided to take him home. Heartwarming and redemptive, Oogie is a story of people who were determined to rescue a dog against all odds and of the family who took him home, named him Oogie, an affection and derivative of ugly, and Aww. made him one of their own. So, look at him. My third pick is A Dog Called Jack by Ivy Pembroke. This was published in 2017. Every street should have a dog like Jack. And every abandoned dog should find a new family like the residents of Christmas Street, a group Aww. of people who just might need Jack as much as he needs them. All day, he trots happily between the terraced houses, receiving treats and toys, offering a tail wag or a lick in return. For Sam, a widower recently returned to London, Jack is Christmas Street's unofficial welcoming committee. For Sam's young son, Teddy, the small scruffy mutt is much more than that. He's a confidant in Teddy's much needed and so far only friend. But other neighbors also rely on Jack for company, including Bill, the street's oldest, grumpiest resident. Bill remembers when everyone knew and looked out for each other. Now people live side by side for years, scarcely interacting. Jack, with some help from Sam and Teddy, is starting to change all that in this neighborhood. After a bumpy start, Jack helps forge a bond between Teddy and the girl next door, and he's the unlikely connection between Bill and the artist Max, who lives with his husband Arthur. He's also an approving witness to the secret relationship between two teenagers from very different backgrounds, and to Sam's tentative flirtation with Teddy's teacher. So Jack knows everything that's happening on this street. After all, Jack, with his willing and open heart, knows how much happier these humans could be if they too took the time to connect with one another. Warm, witty, and an irresistibly charming as its canine hero, A Dog Called Jack, is the uplifting story of an ordinary street and the extraordinary dog bringing all its inhabitants together. So, Aww. sounded like a fun pick, too. <clears throat> Everyone can learn from dogs. <laughs> uh, my next story is The Love Story of Missy Carmichael by Beth Morey. The world has changed her own Missy Carmichael. At 79, she's estranged from her daughter. Her son and only grandson live across the world in Australia, and her great love is gone. Missy spends her days with a sip of sherry, scrubbing the kitchen in her big empty house and reliving her past, although it's her mistakes and secrets that she allows to shine brightest. The last thing Missy expects is for two perfect strangers and one spirited dog to break through her prickly exterior and show her just how much love she still has to give. So, <laughs> look at the dog. <laughs> My next pick is kind of a more popular author, actually. This is The Bright Side of Going Dark by Kelly Harms, published in 2020. She's the best-selling author of The Overdue Life of Amy Byler, if you're familiar with that. As one of the most popular influencers on social media, Mia Bell has lived her life online for years. With her celebrity dog and gorgeous fiancé, she's planning the ultimate virtual wedding. It's expensive, it's elaborate, and it's entirely paid for by her sponsors. But off camera, her world is far from picture perfect. After being jilted by her fiance and faking her nuptials to please her sponsors, Mia finally has had enough. She heaves her phone off a cliff ready to live and maybe find love 
offline for a change. Her sudden absence doesn't go unnoticed, especially by techie loaner Paige Miller, who hacks Mia's account and begins impersonating the internet celebrity with her celebrity dog. <coughs> Paige has her reasons. Her half-sister Jessica idolizes Mia and desperately needs something to believe in. If taking over Mia's online persona is Paige's only mean of connecting to her sister, then so be it. Creating a like worthy life is more fun than Paige expected, but when she grows too bold and is caught in the act, a fiasco ensues that could forever change Mia, Paige, and the people who love them. Because somewhere amid all this chaos is an invaluable lesson, one that only real life can teach. So check out the bright side of going dark. So my next one is a cozy mystery. <laughs> <laughs> this one is Rough Justice by Lauren Berenson. This is part of a Melanie Travis series. Um, with the excitement of the spring dog show season sweeping Connecticut, Melanie is determined to help her son finally lead his standard poodle toward a championship title. Aunt Peg even skips the judging panel to exhibit a pup of her own, and she's set on standing out from the pack with a handmade leash from Jasmine Crane, a talented canine portrait artist who also crafts stunning accessories for discriminating showgoers. Jasmine's handiwork is to die for, but Aunt Peg didn't expect to discover the woman murdered behind the concession booth, strangled by one of her dazzling custom creations. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Another shockwave ripples through the close-knit community show when Amanda, Aunt Peg's longtime dog sitter and renter on Jasmine's property, ominously vanishes that same day. While nosing around for clues, Melanie suspects a dangerous connection between Amanda's disappearance and the homicide case, a hunch that grows as her investigation reveals sketchy secrets about the late artist. Juggling a demanding teaching job, the pressures of the show ring, and daunting suspect lists, Melanie finds herself entangled in a mind-boggling murder mystery and hot on the trail of a desperate killer. Now, this is like number 22 in the oh, series, gosh. so there's a whole bunch of them, and they all are about dogs because it's like this dog show person. So they got come gone with the woof. <laughs> <laughs> live and let growl I love so, cozy mystery I titles do they're so clever <laughs> oh I love it my last pick is actually probably one of the more popular dog books that we have this is A Dog's Purpose by W. Bruce Cameron published in 2010 this actually had a 4.34 rating wow. on Goodreads. It's very good, though. I uh, know. This is the remarkable story of one endearing dog's search for his purpose over the course of several lives. More than just another charming dog story, this touches on the universal quest for an answer to life's most basic question, why are we here? Surprised to find himself reborn as a rambunctious, golden-haired puppy after a tragically short life as a stray mutt, Bailey's search for his new life meaning leads him into the loving arms of eight-year-old Ethan. During their countless adventures, Bailey joyously discovers how to be a good dog. But this life as a beloved family pet is not the end of Bailey's journey. Reborn as a puppy, yet again, Bailey wonders, will he ever find his purpose? It's heartwarming, insightful, and often laugh-out-loud funny. This book is not only the emotional and hilarious story of a dog's many lives, but also a dog's eyes commentary on human relationships and the unbreakable bonds between man and man's best friend. This story teaches us that love never dies, that our true friends are always with us, and that every creature on earth is born with a purpose. Aww. We also had a patron recommendation this week from one of our patrons and volunteers. So Quinn is one of our volunteers at the library, and she recommends the Chet and Bernie mystery series by Spencer Quinn. It starts with the book Dog On It. <laughs> Um, I pulled Sense and Sensibility <laughs> off our shelf. But in this series, Chet is a wise and lovable canine, <clears throat> and he's the narrator who works alongside Bernie, a down-on-his-luck private investigator. Chet might have flunked out of police school, but he's a detective through and through. In their first adventure, Chet and Bernie investigate the disappearance of Madison, a teenage girl who may or may not have been kidnapped, but who has definitely gotten mixed up with some very unsavory characters. Their search for clues takes them into the desert, to biker bars, exotic locales, with Chet's highly trained nose leading the way. But Chet and Bernie both bring their own special skills to the hunt. With his doggy ways and his endearingly hard-boiled voice, Chet is full of heart and occasionally prone to mischief. He's intensely loyal to Bernie, who, though distracted by issues that Chet has some difficulty understanding, like divorce, child custody, all those human things, and some other peculiar human concerns, 
enormously, enormously likable himself in his flawed, all too human way. There's over a dozen books in this series, all with those clever titles, just <laughs> like your cozy mystery. And Quinn said she just loves a series told by the dog and from the perspective of the dog. So that's great. The Chet and Bernie mystery series by Spencer Quinn. <clears throat> nice suggestion, Quinn. We love suggestions from readers, so keep them coming. <laughs> We hope you we helped you find something to read if you love dogs like us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. We know you've been finding us on Facebook and our Kimberly Public Library YouTube channel. Like, comment, share. Like I said, we always like to hear what you're reading. If you have a suggestion for yeah. a topic for us, we'd be happy to look into books related to that topic for you too. Just put it in the comments. And until next time, thanks for watching. Bye bye. -bye.